the psychopath, and it's very important to distinguish a narcissist from the psychopath. The psychopath doesn't care about other people. He doesn't need other people. He does not depend on other people to regulate his sense of self-worth and his self-perception and self-image. The narcissist has an inflated, grandiose self-image, which he needs to maintain with input from other people. The psychopath doesn't. And the psychopath is goal-oriented. He wants money. He wants sex. He wants contacts and connections. He wants power, etc., etc. So I could say that the psychopath is a caricature of a normal human being. It's a normal be human being writ large, gun or eye. While the narcissist is a void, an emptiness, an absence. Not, in many respects, not human at all. And that's not me saying this. That's the father of the field, Otto Kernberg. So today I'm going to talk about how I feel like the Chris Watts and Shanna and Watts story changed how women view dating slowly and subconsciously. I say this because, yes, we watch a lot of true crime, we watch a lot of news, and we hear stories about men taking out their families or their partners all the time. But for some reason, we were very much obsessed with this case. And it's because when you look at Chris Watts, what you see is a very loving, handsome, you know, handsome to you know the average person. You see a very handsome, sweet, doting father, a man who loves his wife for who she is and very attentive, you know, eye contact. It's giving, he replies to texts, you know? And I think that subconsciously, as we followed this story and got invested, we also started looking at men differently. It's not to say that we haven't already because we are in the phase right now of grieving men and grieving what they call love, their manufactured version of love. And so the truth is, at least for me, is that now I'm even more careful and more inquisitive about things. Like I ask a lot more questions to see how a person thinks or how they would make certain choices depending on whatever circumstances that may be uncomfortable or not ideal, so to speak. It's all because of this case. And it's strange because I've seen so many other cases that have been equally as horrifying and yet this one is the one that really gets to me and I, I i have to honestly say it's because of how sweet and doting and kind this man looks because he looked like that up until the day of august 13th 2018 when the cops showed up at his place and they started asking him questions the press came asking him questions, the vacant eyes, the pressing of the lips, the deceptive mannerisms came into play. And when I looked at him, I saw a weak uh, sub, a person that was inauthentic, a caricature of what they thought a human being was and so now how this ties in with women losing trust in men the way this ties in is that because we're watching this case so closely we watched it so closely it's made women have even more of a you know serial unaliver radar up which is great but it makes us absolutely way more terrified of relationships with men that seem too good to be true or men that seem very invested and loving and it's sad because 
you don't want to take the pessimistic route. But in cases like these, you realize that being too positive, being too optimistic of the man that's in front of you might be the biggest mistake you make in your life. And women are grieving men right now. They're grieving the manufactured love they give. They're grieving the, the idea that men can love because there's just too much information out there. There's so much psychology and information on their health and, their, and the relationship they have with life with women and with their children out there. So much information on their psychology that is that it is hard for women to ignore these facts. It's hard for women to ignore that even when you think you're safe, you probably aren't. It just takes that right day, the right side chick, perfect storm of financial burden, you know, health issues, whatever the case may be to trigger a man. And I'm not saying that women go out there and do that, take out their family. It is just common, common by statistics, by numbers that men do it more. And so this case, I will never forget it because it really taught me to be very cautious and, and, and learn about psychopathy, narcissism, and attachment styles that are mixed with some of these personality disorders. And I think women who are grieving men, grieving manufactured love, grieving the idea that they can trust the same people that hurt them. The same people that are saying, you need to be protected. Protected by what? By men? By our own husbands? By our, our own brothers? By our own uncles? By our own pastors? You know? By, by our own sons? Like, these are the things that women are coming into realization about that it doesn't matter how long you know him it doesn't matter how long you've stood you've stood by his side you never know you can be six months pregnant with two beautiful children and have a home with this man had a beautiful wedding and you know five six years into a relationship he wants, you tr he wants to trade you in for someone else. And if you want to make it work. And what's sad is that Shannon really wanted to make it work with this guy, right? And people said things like, nah, Shannon is the narc. She's the one who wanted to put him on camera all the time. She's the one that wanted him super involved with everything. With her, um, I, I want to say it was like a, like a health multi-level marketing kind of situation. And he wasn't interested, but that's still not enough to want to take out your family. And if a woman, because a lot of people were saying Shannon was the one who was tearing him down and making him subservient to her and not listening to him and taking him for granted. That, even if that was the case, a real man would get up off his ass and leave. And he would find any kind of way to even if he leaves and he knows he may be in financial ruin to set himself up and and have a good conversation with his with his soon to be ex-wife to not be in ruin or set himself up personally to have a easy peasy divorce. You keep everything, girl. Bye. I'm okay with just seeing my kids and living in a apartment or a trailer. I'm gonna move in with my side chick. You know, some people say he did it because of insurance. He did it because of insurance. I think it was like $90,000 $90, worth of insurance between the children and her. But still, th th that's not even enough. Like, there's no money in the world, but that is ridiculous. Shannon wanted to work it out with this man. 
He didn't want that. Shannon wanted a stable, beautiful life. And she wanted to make it work at by all means necessary. He did not. And instead, he chose to take out his family. And what we as women have to come to grips with is that there isn't any way in the world, unless, you know, mind reading, <laughs> you know, that you're going to know when a man is going to wake up and want to whack you. Wake up one morning after the night before, maybe making love, maybe you guys had a wonderful dinner, watched your favorite movie together, and he's going to wake up the next day and want to whack you. You just don't know. There's so many risks with relationships with men and the fact that the majority of men are avoidant psychopathic narcissistic have very low empathy especially for women because they have been programmed they have been they have not just been programmed but they have this belief that women are beneath them it doesn't make sense to them to want to stoop to our level to be empathetic and pay whatever amount needed to get some storage in their brain so they can make space for the women in their lives and the children in their lives when women say they can't trust men this is the reason this is one of the reasons. It's not just them getting abused by the men in their lives. It's not just them being abused in places where they're supposed to be safe by other men. It's watching news and stories over and over and over and over. Millions of stories about men wanting to get rid of their wives. And who accomplish that and men who make jokes about abusing men who make jokes about taking out their wives and these things aren't taken lightly anymore w women have been through so much experience with the i was just joking guy the i was just mad guy i was just drunk guy i she was the the she was nothing to me guy that they're not willing to risk it and this isn't a threat to men. Like, oh, if you don't become empathetic and be better people, we're not going to be with you. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that now you guys know why women are taking a major step back. Because they've realized over decades and centuries that this is how the basic framework of men for the good guys out there that have developed some empathy, that are decent human beings, they're gonna be some lucky, very lucky women to have them. And they'll be very lucky men to have the women they have in their lives. But for the majority of men, especially on dating apps, men that have been divorced a couple times, men who watch these weird ass red pill podcasts, men who have no purpose in life and who make having muscles and pleasing everyone around them their personality type those are the ones you, that you have to stay away from those are the ones you gotta be be careful with those are the ones you gotta be careful with but but ladies are are, are, are coming to grips with the truth it's just sad and still to this day i will never forget shenan I'm always think about her and I'm always keeping back in my head that any moment a dude can switch up on me. In some ways, it's sad. And in other ways, it keeps me on my toes. So whenever a dude, you know, seems like he's acting weird, I'm out of there. And I don't, I don't second guess it. That don't always mean I'll be successful when I leave. You know, some women, you know, they're ready to go. And they're not very successful in leaving. I'll tell you this much. Women are paying attention to these red flags. And the second they see you're avoidant. The second they see that you're a people pleaser. 
the second they see that your identity your identity is just your your muscles and how people view you you hate your job and then you get into you know a relationship with a woman with the with this subservient type of personality thinking she's going to help you feel human again make you feel alive again no they're running they're gonna say no you figure that out you figure that out you find somebody that'll help you figure that out but it isn't gonna be me and the fact that there are women out there who have been through so much and they look at a guy like chris and say i understand why he did what he did ma'am you are looking for the lowest hanging fruit because that is what you are and the only reason you got into law school or you know to be a nurse or to be anything of these you know anything government related or community based you did it because you wanted the validation you wanted to be called a good nurse you wanted to say i'm a nurse and you want to hear people say oh you must take care of people so good you must be so sweet and kind that's what i think oh you know how to defend people you have people's back oh you must be so smart a lot of y'all get into these jobs being low down dirty broads and then you go after guys like him after everything you've seen after everything you've been through because you're so damn desperate and you're broken beyond repair and you choose a man like that because he's broken beyond repair and maybe together you guys could be broken it's sick rest in peace shannon watts and your beautiful baby girls they didn't deserve what that man did and i am so sorry that your children, Bella and Celeste, had to go through that. And you had no idea that the person you were going to marry, the person you trusted, the person you said is the man of your dreams, was going to be the one that took you to sleep forever. That is something I'll always keep in my mind, always keep in my heart. I always keep you in my prayers. I hope you're in a good place and that Chris Watts gets everything he deserves in that jail. Can't believe it. It's just like, I, I, when I think about it, I'm just like, I just cannot believe that there's people out there that think this guy was really worth saving in any way. And the crazy thing is, a lot of men are like Chris Watts. They hide behind their beautiful smiles, their sweet guy facade, but they're really an empty meat suit, a shell that covers a dark hole, sadly. And we have to share the world with them. At this point, you know, if you're dating or you get in relationships, y'all just, just get a psychological evaluation on these guys. Get a psychological evaluation. If you got to call the ex-girlfriend, find out how they were in school, whatever it is, do that. Because you are risking your life every time you get in a relationship with a dude. And then you add children to that, the stress, you add a house and other f things that are financial burdens. Yeah. Yeah. And, and when you add the entitlement men have, that makes it all the more scarier. All right, guys, thank you for listening. Make sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one.